The year is 2017. A group of dumbass high schoolers and college students are playing 5th edition at a kitchen table. Be me, high school freshman and the new player in the group. Be not me. College senior, DM, Alex. College freshman, Nate. And high school junior, Toby. Be really not me. College sophomore, Jim. Alex begins to set the scene. We're all at the generic tavern in the town of Little Loaf and we start to introduce our level 1 characters. Nate is a neutral good old half-elf cleric. Toby is a lawful good middle-aged dragonborn paladin. And I am a lawful neutral middle-aged human fighter. Jim's character is Brendan, a chaotic good 10-year-old variant human warlock. Nate, Toby and I share our backstories. They're all pretty generic. Then Jim gives Brendan's backstory. Brendan found a magical talking tree in the forest. The tree called Oak offered to be Brendan's patron. In exchange, Brendan would have to fill out a special book, Pokedex, with information about any and all creatures he sees. Jim, who has been a fan of Pokemon since Gen 3, announces that he is doing a trainer build based on one of the player characters from Gen 3. Alex gives the okay and we dove right into our first encounter, a classic D&D tavern fight with four drunks. Nate tries to defuse the situation and gets clobbered. Toby is in a fist fight with a couple of drunks and I take things a little too far by stabbing a guy. Go Pikachu! The attention of everyone in the bar turns to the 10 year old and his freshly summoned mice familiar. One of the drunks begins mocking Brendan and laughing at his familiar. Keep in mind that Pikachu was literally just a mice. Use Thundershock! Pikachu crawls up the drunk's leg and Brendan casts Shocking Grasp through his familiar. It turns out that touch spells can be cast through familiars. Bzzzt, Duck Game Boy. Jim rolls well for damage and the drunk collapses to the floor. The other drunks, already mostly beaten, take this as their cue to clear out. Thus begins the story of Brendan and his quest to become a Pokemon Master. Fast forward an hour. Alex lays on the plot hook. The mayor of Little Loaf's daughter has been kidnapped by an evil cult that worships Tiamat, the dragon god. With a nice persuasion roll, Toby convinces the mayor to lend the party some magic items to help them on their journey. Nate gets a staff that casts cure wounds for free twice a day, Toby gets a set of plus one armour, and I get a great sword that does an additional 1d4 fire damage. What about Brendan? Alex tries to hide his smile as the mayor addresses the boy. Mayor. Uh, aren't you a little too young to be hunting a cult? I guess you can have these things. The mayor hands Brendan five red and white, roughly baseball sized spheres. <laughs> <laughs> As Alex is describing to Jim what his new items do, Jim's face lights up. Fucking Pokeballs. Item get jingled up, Mom. Brendan politely thanks the mayor, who is woefully unaware of the terror that he has just released upon the world. Over the next six months, IRL, we meet on weekends. Brendan amasses an army of creatures from the ordinary to the bizarre. It should be noted that he took a level in Rogue to boost his animal handling skills, expertise. It should also be noted that this guy is still 10 years old. With just raw animal handling checks alone, Brendan gets two orphaned wolf puppies, 23 tiny crabs, two very big crabs, a horse with a unicorn horn glued onto it, a velociraptor, two monkeys, an ice memphit, a magma memphit, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> with the four pokeballs he uses, Brendan captures a rust monster, a gelatinous cube, a fucking ginormous crab, and a kobold. Aside from those, he is gifted a hellhound by his rival, and is gifted a wormling by Giovanni, one of the cult leaders. All of these have amazing stories that I would be glad to post in their own, if you're all interested. Fast forward past those six months. The party is in the final dungeon of the adventure, the volcano base of the cult leader. It is at this point that the party discovers what the cult leader is. Adult Red Dragon. Of course, the party had levelled up a few times since the start, but they're not in a position to take down an adult dragon head on. Alex tells us later that he intended for us to solve a dragon-wide puzzle to make the volcano erupt and destroy the base. The dragon was supposed to escape and continue the plot. But an easy solution like that is not why you're here. 
You're here to see a 10 year old child derail an entire campaign. The party waltzes right into the dragon's throne room and rolls initiative. The fight starts out as most of the fight's dead. Toby and I are beating shit up with our melee weapons. Nate is keeping us alive with magic and Brendan is commanding his posse of monsters from the back. Alex, our paying as the dragon, does the edgy villain, you can't defeat me, chuckle. However, we are all rolling unusually high for our attack rolls and dexterity saves. Alex starts getting really nervous and the colour drains from his face. The dragon has about 10% of its HP left when our luck runs out. Alex. The red dragon bathes the battlefield in fire with his breath weapon. Nate rolls his deck save. Crit fail. Toby rolls his deck save. Crit fail. I roll my deck save. Crit fail. We all stare at Jim as he rolls his deck save. 18. He makes it. But most of his monsters aren't so lucky. And by the end of the dragon's turn, three fourths of the party, two orphaned wolf puppies, 23 crabs, two very big crabs, a horse with a unicorn horn glued onto it, a velociraptor, two monkeys, an ice memphit, a magna memphit, a hellhound, a rust monster, and a gelatinous cube, and a kobold have been reduced to ashes. Alex looks over at Jim, expecting to see him with a face of terror. Jim is stoic. Jim pulls his phone out of his pocket, taps it a few times, turns up the volume, and places it on the table. It's playing a song. It's the fucking legendary Pokemon battle theme from Pokemon Emerald. Compressed trumpets.gba. The thumps of the bass drum and the dramatic blaring of the trumpets set the stage for Brendan's crowning achievement. Brendan and his two remaining monsters, the ginormous fucking crab and the wormling, are terribly outmatched. Crouching behind the crab, Brendan orders the wormling to keep up the attack. The dragon was damaged a little by the wormling's breath weapon, but retaliates by reducing both the crab and the wormling to confetti using his sharp claws. And there... In an arena coated in ash, the 10 year old boy is staring down at the 500 year old dragon. Since Brendan is now pretty much helpless, Alex, as the dragon, starts to give the good effort but you were fucked from the start speech. Dragon, you're impressive for one so young, but I'm afraid that your effort was GO POKEBALL! Alex freezes. Apparently he hadn't been keeping good track of the pokeballs he gave Brendan. Kinda stupid if you ask me. Alex sweats bullets as Jim rolls animal handling. 19 plus. Brendan's ridiculous animal handling bonus of plus 10. The Pokeball's modifier of 10 equals 39. Alex sighs as the rest of the table erupts in cheers as the 10 year old human turns the big bad evil guy into his pet dragon. What? <laughs> Alex announces that the story is basically fucked. You know with most of the party being dead and the big bad evil guy being out of the picture. So next session would be the start of a new campaign. As we're all packing up, Alex pulls Jim aside and whispers in his ear. Fast forward two weeks. A level 10 party of seasoned adventurers sit in the newly refurbished but almost empty generic Little Loaf Tavern. They ask the barkeep where everyone is and then Alex drops the plot hook. Barkeep. You haven't heard? All the businesses in town are drying up. No one wants to make the dangerous trip through Little Loaf Wood anymore. Nate. Well, what makes the trip so dangerous? Barkeep. Well, no one is sure, but rumour has it that a red dragon has taken up residence in the woods. A couple of the people who made it there in one piece even say they saw a little kid with it, but that's just a load of bull if you ask me. The party decides not to go after the little kid. 